I'm Dr. Kedma Doc, the president of the Senusha Diabetes and Hypertension Association. Kedma spelled K-E-D-H-M-A Dor D-O-R-H. The actual day of awareness for diabetes is November 14th. This year it falls on a Tuesday. So although we have one specific day, we like to take the whole month as ours to, to raise the awareness. Now diabetes is a condition which has been uh, understood to this date as a metabolic and more vascular disease or, uh, or issue. It affects every single organ in the body from, I mean, just name it, everywhere that receives blood or is supplied by your blood has to have blood vessels and therefore diabetes can affect it. The common areas will be your eyes, your, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, but every single spot can be affected by diabetes. And that is um, why we really need to raise awareness, okay? Because key thing is diabetes touches every single person in the world. You'll notice that on my left shoulder, I'm wearing a blue circle. Now uh, this circle was designed to bring the concept of unity, to unite the entire world on this concept of, of the fight against diabetes. So circle to unite everyone and the blue color actually is in support of the UN resolution uh, and the UN flag which is also blue. Some persons uh, describe that it's also representing the blue sky that we all enjoy. So that's the whole idea behind the blue circle. So every Diabetes awareness would be from this, well, we, we use this symbol, the blue circle, to, sorry, to raise the awareness of this um, condition. So, throughout the month of November, the association has actually agreed or partnered with the Ministry of Health to bring about several activities that we're hoping to help persons understand, uh, manage, and very ambitious, but hopefully eradicate diabetes from our population. Okay, so the association, our vision is to be the focal institute uh, in the prevention, management, education, uh, and of course, eradication of diabetes and hypertension. But this time around, we're speaking only about diabetes. Um, one of our first activities is actually a diabetes quiz. This is an activity supported by the IDF, uh, more specifically the NARC region, North America Caribbean region, IDF stands for International Diabetes Federation. So we've, with the Ministry of Education, reached out to all of our primary schools and grade five students, a standard free, back in my day we call it standard free, yeah? so uh, that's about age 10, 9, 10. They've all been given some study materials and just on the weekend we concluded the first round where they went online, answered some questions and we're happy to say that we have a little over 50 students who took part and uh, we're looking forward to having the semi-finals next week and the finals we hoping to have it on the actual November 14th. The finals we, we're looking forward to it being somewhat like our previous um, school challenges, you know, like a school, what do you call it, spelling bee, where persons are asked questions and the last man or last student standing, sorry, the last student standing will be our winner or the champion for this year's uh, diabetes quiz. And we think that is a very important activity because in school, we'd have learned back in my time about uh, vitamin C, vitamin D deficiencies, and to this day, those things are not affecting us as much compared to diabetes. We have um, conditions or situations such as childhood obesity. These are all precursors or, or conditions, factors that favor your development of diabetes early and later on in life. So we think that it's important that we start as a nation to consider introducing the concept and the impact of what we do and how we do it and how it could lead to diabetes from those tender ages. So the quiz we think will be a nice segue into introducing part of the curriculum to have uh, diabetes friendly or diabetes related materials. So that's, that's one. We're also looking forward to having our continuous, um, uh, what do you call it, 
awareness talks at different schools, different business places. The association, this has been our long-standing uh, mandate every month, and I've said it a few times in the past uh, that we'd like you to challenge us, call the association, book a date with us, and we'll come in and have a talk with your school, your, your business place, whoever it is. We will find, make sure we have a convenient time to come together and share as much information as we have about diabetes, and this is absolutely free. Okay, you don't have to pay for us to come and do that. So that's something we'll continue to do throughout the month and throughout the year. Okay, not just for Diabetes Awareness Month, but this is something we have as a standing order in the association. Uh, but um, the other activity that we think is uh, a grand one is, well, there are two grand ones if I have to be honest. Grand one is the health fair that we're looking forward to having in uh, Constitution Park, November 30th. It will be a fair with considering everything diabetes. Persons can look forward to coming and understanding some of the things that you traditionally did not associate with diabetes, such as a holistic um, life balance, you know, mental health, how this could actually lead to someone developing diabetes. So we invite in everyone, the Ministry of Health is on board. We understand, well, now we understand, we know as well that the St. Lucia Taiwan government uh, recently signed MOU on, um, I think it's non-communicable diseases. They're also part of this activity, so you can look forward to getting some material from them where we'll be sharing everything on diabetes and how individuals can ensure that they prevent themselves from getting it. Those who have it, they can better manage it. And those who don't want it or want it out of their life could actually hopefully eradicate it. Uh, so that's a health fair. We're also looking forward to having a nice um, fitness exercise at the end. And yes, I mentioned in no, no, was it May this year that I will be trying to adopt a lifestyle as a president of the association. I have started. The belly is slowly going down. All right. Um, but uh, we, we'll be there and we'll continue to encourage persons to adopt the lifestyles necessary for the prevention, treatment, and management of diabetes. Uh, the next activity is Moonlight Walk. All right, it's, no, we're not encouraging any werewolves to come out. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, a walk with a difference. Uh, it's a walk where we encourage persons to come. This year will be done at November 27th, is our moonlight walk. It will be, we have one in the north of the island and the other in Viewfort Town. So Cassius Town and Viewfort Town. So everyone can look forward to all the materials on that. You register with the association with our long-standing partner, Marcy. You'll also be able to register there, get your t-shirts, and come join us on a moonlight walk where we further raise the awareness of diabetes. And there's also this year that the Ministry of Health and the association is, is trying to help persons appreciate better diet or food when it comes to diabetes. You know, there's, there's so much confusion out there as to, okay, uh, I'm, I'm living with diabetes, so I'm trying to prevent diabetes. I don't eat, I don't sweeten my tea, I don't sweeten my juice, I don't take any sugar. All right, that's the actual sugar. I don't take any sugar. And why did I develop diabetes? Why is my blood sugar still high? So we're trying to help persons understand that this, this time around. And we, we're going to make a deliberate effort to attack that confusion or misconception. So again, diabetes, when you mention sugar, we, we, we're referring to starch or carbohydrates. So there are various forms of carbohydrates. Um, we also have persons who say, but my parents, grandparents, they didn't have these conditions as much as today. And they used to eat all the provisions they wanted in the world and they're fine. Yes, that may be true to an extent. We don't have the data or the evidence to substantiate a lot of those claims that we're making. But we also have to recognize that the lifestyle has changed. Technology has given us the opportunity where I could stay in my house, get my water, get my electricity, get everything I want. In fact, man, they drive throughs these days, so almost anything you could think of. So persons are less active. Therefore, they don't burn that energy we're taking in the food as much as before. And we, we tend to eat, live to eat, and not eat to live. 
All right, food is meant to give us nutrients, to give us energy, to give us what we need to survive. And not we live in to eat everything in the world or finish all the food around us. So the idea is we want to educate persons on the right ways to eat, the right foods to eat, especially when it comes to portion sizes. Okay, uh, as someone living with diabetes or someone trying to prevent diabetes, fact is there's no food that you cannot eat. What's really important is how you eat this food, so the portion size, the frequency at which you eat it. So we, we're hoping to dispel some of those myths as we embark on this project. And um, I'm excited to say that part of it will include some demonstrations with a world-renowned chef that we have on board, uh, Chef Orlando. Okay, um, the plan is to do some demonstrations at our schools and take it a step further so next year our students can look forward to participating in a competition where they create their own menu or their own um, recipe for a healthy or well put together lunch and breakfast. Um, so Diabetes Awareness Month, everything diabetes, um, making sure persons are clear as to what it is, where it came from and the way forward with it. And the way forward is we need to get it out. Okay, IDF has actually projected by the year 2030, one in nine persons in the world will be living with diabetes if we don't make a conscious effort right now to do something about it. In terms of our local statistics, um, in 2014, 2015, I believe WHO, the last um, report done on St. Lucia, showed that we have a little over 14% prevalence of diabetes in St. Lucia. So we, we're looking at a really high number there. 14, or a little over 14 out of every 100 persons in St. Lucia is living with diabetes. All right, and that's, that's a big enough number to take seriously. So this November, St. Lucia Diabetes Hypertension Association, along with the Ministry of Health and other partners, we will be bringing to the St. Lucia population diabetes and what we can and what we should be doing about it. There's a slogan that IDF International, well, use around the world, and this year is know your risk, know your response. And that's why we spoke to our diet, our, our size, um, physical activity, these are some of the risks and of course we need to know all of the risks and we need to know what we can do about them. So this will be our approach for this year's um, Awareness Month. Uh, we, we continue to get persons who are looking forward to working with us and doing more because as I said, as, we've know, as we know and as we've uh, recognized globally, diabetes affects every single individual in this world. A few years ago, you used to think that, oh, that's something for the older folk, or that's somebody far away you heard might have had it. But now, I am sure everyone knows at least either a friend or a relative who has been affected by diabetes. So we have a lot of persons who want to get on board with this fight against diabetes, and they continue to reach out to us. We don't turn back anyone or any activity, as long as it's for the cause, we'll be on board and we'll be pushing it. Okay, okay so we have partnered with officially uh, Marcy, Marcy Stores, that company. We have partnered with the Ministry of Health, all right, we have partnered with the San Lucia Taiwan um, project on, on health. We have partnered with uh, San Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association. Every single person that you can think of, we, we this year embarked on a, a campaign where we literally sent out correspondences, letters to every single business place and we're still doing that because eventually we want to partner with the entire island. All right, uh, everybody is, this is everybody's business. If we don't treat it that way, we'll not have the, the desired effect on diabetes in St. Lucia. So, we're partnering with everybody. So everybody needs to get on board and we'll be coming to everybody to get through with this message. So for people who don't have diabetes, you want to prevent yourself from getting it. Firstly, you must know your risk. Go to your doctor, find out um, if you are at risk of getting diabetes. 
And in so doing, you must ensure that you are preventing yourself from getting it because um, what you put in your body is your physical, your, your lifestyle will determine whether you get diabetes or not. So number one, you want to be physically active. You want to ensure that you are exercising at least three times for the week, at least 30 minutes for the day. And you want to ensure that you, your, your diet has fruits, vegetables, peas and beans, your legumes, which is like your, sorry, your peas and beans are your legumes, your nuts, your seeds, some of those healthy foods that we are lacking in our diet. You want to ensure that the foods that you are consuming, like alcohol, cut back on it because alcohol is a risk factor. Um, you want to ensure that processed foods eat less of processed foods. Your foods should be whole, wholesome foods, your provisions, your peas and beans, your fruits, your vegetables, drink adequate water. And most importantly, even if you are eating healthy foods, the portion, the amount of food that you put on your plate is critical. We St. Lucians, we eat too much. Our plates are high in carbohydrate foods, lots of meats, and very little on vegetables and peas. And so we want, to, we want persons to consume more of the fruits, the vegetables, your green leafy vegetables, your orange vegetables, you know, the colorful foods. foods. But um, processed foods are high in sugar, high in fat, high in salt, and these are risk factors for diabetes. So these are the key things that somebody who does not have diabetes should, should practice. It, it's like, um, you know, just to give some, some guidance, you know, you have your plate, maybe an eight inch plate around the um, perimeter of the plate, eight, eight inches. And so you want at least quarter of that plate can have your provisions, your provisions or, or your greens, whatever it is that you're having. And, and the meat portion should be about quarter as well. And the other half, either you put a quarter of peas and vegetables or you have half with your vegetables, whether it is steam uh, or, or um, raw, or steam and raw, you can do either or. But it's actually very healthy to have some raw vegetables. Yes, yeah, so that's like a little guidance as to you know, how to portion your food without having to count. The same, the same rules would adhere to, the same rules would be for whether you have it or don't have it, but with persons who already have it, would need to be more strict. And in so doing, you have to be careful um, the type of food that you consume and also the quantity. So we know that um, blood sugar usually gets raised by carbohydrate foods, whether it's carbohydrate, carbohydrate we mean starch, starchy foods and sugar. These are two that makes the carbohydrates. So foods that, that you know that have our carbohydrates, are um, our provisions, rice, beans have carbohydrates as well. So even if a food is healthy for you, you still have to watch the amount that you have. For example, pumpkin is a, a very healthy food. Um, carrots are healthy and they are vegetables, but that doesn't mean you could have any amounts. We have some of the vegetables that, you could, that we call free vegetables, like the green leafy vegetables, you can have more of those. But the others like carrots and pumpkin and those others tend to have some starch in them. And so you want to ensure that you have in you know, the, your portion is, is controlled. And I'd also like to um, encourage persons to go to the health center and to see a, a nutritionist or a nutrition officer who will give them guidance as to how to eat if you have diabetes. Because they will need the help, they will need the guidance. And so if you are not on the right path, you'll be able to get some assistance with that. The, the, the spacing of their meals, the timing of their meals, the quantity of food that they consume are all important. The amount of water that they need to drink, and um, you know, and also the, the physical activity, you know. So all of these things have to be taken into consideration to ensure that they are doing the right thing. And labeling, uh, reading yes, labels. reading your labels uh, is very important, and it is one of the things that we need to 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 teach people how to do because it's not so, it can be a bit difficult. But once you taught, it's very easy. So they need to know, you know, what to look for on the. On the label. Now I know I spoke about sugar, but also you know, the type of fat is important. A diet that is high in fat, especially saturated fat, will increase the risk of somebody getting diabetes or also will increase um, the chances of somebody with diabetes getting other health conditions like heart disease, etc. So you know you want to have lower fat. <coughs>
You want to consume lower fat, fat, fat foods, fatty foods, and also foods that are low in cholesterol, and especially the saturated fats gets converted into cholesterol in, in, in our bodies. So you want to um, have less of the, the meats, the fatty meats, and consume more of leaner meats, fish, and sometimes you can have vegetarian meals. We don't need to always have meat on our plates. We need to move away from that, that way of thinking. Also, the way the food is prepared, you know, if the food is fried, of course, it's going to be, it's going to have more, more fat content. And so you want to ensure that you have more um, grilled foods, boiled and baked in, in comparison to having, instead of having, um, you know, fried foods.